Hello and welcome again. Uh, we will talk about another example here of uh, how to compute uh, discrete logarithms using the baby step and Jaya step algorithm. In the previous video, we uh, saw one example where the number or this number here for z, uh, the number n star is a prime number. In this case, it's not going to be prime. So let's look at the example. So we want to find the discrete log in base 45 of 61 in, in this group, z. 98 start. Now the first thing we have to notice as I mentioned is that 98 is not a prime number but anyway uh, this group is going to be cyclic and remember the reason for that is because uh, in this particular case 98 is 2 times 7 squared and whenever this number here is twice the power of a prime uh, this group will be cyclic. Also if it is a power of a prime of it is uh, 2 or 4. This prime number, of course, has to be an odd number. So in this particular case, it has the uh, form that is needed for this to be cyclic. So that group is cyclic. And we can also check that this 45 that is here is also a generator of that uh, cyclic group. Now, there is a particular way in which you can do that. It's also in the sequence of videos. And you can go ahead and review those things uh, if you don't remember how to do or check that this is a generator for this group. So basically what that means is that Z98 star, if you take, start taking powers of 45, then you get the whole elements of uh, Z98. So you get all from 45 to the 0 to 45 to the 41. So this uh, group here has 42 elements there. And the list of the 42 elements is right here. Now remember that the elements of Z98 star are all the numbers from 1 to 90. Uh, 8 that are relatively prime to 98. So these are all the relatively prime to 98, between 1 and 98. So those are all the elements. Another thing I have to check is that the 61 that is here is actually also an element of Z98 star, and I already marked that down here, uh, 61 is an element of this group. So everything checks out, so let's go ahead and compute the discrete log, so or the chunks uh, baby step, giant step method for the discrete log. So remember the step number one is I'm going to compute m, which is the ceiling of the square root of the number of elements in my group. Now, because is this particular group is v of 98, so it's the number of relative primes to 98. So if I compute this one first, uh, v of 98, remember 98 is 2 times 7 squared. To compute v of that, I compute v of 2 times phi of 7 squared. Phi of 2 is 1, because remember phi of 2 is the number of relatively primes to 2, and that's just 1. And phi of 7 squared, you can always compute it as this power minus the same power, but minus 1 in the exponent. So 7 squared, 7 squared minus 7, which gives me 42, which is the number of elements here in the group. So I have 42, then I take the square root of it, and I take the ceiling of that, and that's going to be my m. So if you actually do the calculation, the square root of 42 is 6.48074. You take the ceiling of that, and of course it gives you 7. So in this case, m is equal to 7. That's the step 1 of the baby step, giant step algorithm that we described last time. If you don't remember that, uh, go back to the previous video and watch that first. There's an explanation of, of that algorithm there too. Alright, so the second step, uh, which is constructing the table, is remember the table, what it, it is, is a pairs of numbers. The first uh, number is xb, which is correspond to the baby step of the algorithm, which is uh, all this xb are just the numbers, including 0 uh, up to m less than m. So in this case, it will be from 0 to uh, 6, because m here is 7. So xb will grow from 0 to 6. And in this particular, in the second entry, I'm going to have my alpha, my generator, to whatever the power of xb is here for all these numbers from 0 to 6. So in this case, it's 45. That's my generator. So in this case, I have the table here. So I have xb is the numbers from 0 to 6. And in this uh, second row is 45 to the xb, whatever the xb is, modulo 98. And remember, this is modulo 98 because we are working in the group. Let me all... Scroll all the way back here, this group Z98 star. 
All right, so if I do all those computations, it gives me all uh, this here. So for example, let's uh, just look at what this 65 here means. This 65 means uh, comes from the computation 45 to the XB, and this XB is two, and this is module 98. So if you actually do this, you get uh, 65. All right, so that's the second step. And this is a table that we'll use for lookup later. So you have to store that table if you're doing this in uh, an algorithm or in the computer, you have to store it. All right, so the third step is to compute alpha to the negative m. So it actually means that I have to compute the inverse of alpha and raise it to this m power. Now in this case, alpha is 45 because that's my generator m. We found that to be seven. So basically what I mean, uh, what I mean here is this 40, 45 inverse all to the seven. Now remember, as I said in the previous video, to compute the inverse of that, you have to use the extended Euclidean algorithm. And that is gonna all come from this. Uh, the greatest common divisor between the generator and n, which is in this case uh, 98, is always one, of course, because 5, 45 is an element of z 98 star. So it's equal to one. You use the standard Euclidean algorithm. Uh, go ahead and watch the videos again if you don't uh, recall exactly what what they are, how do you compute those? So from the standard Euclidean algorithm, I'm just gonna give you the answer here. So what that means is that 40, uh, this one here, the GCD is combination, a linear combination of 45 and 98. And I have that linear combination over here. So it's 45 times negative 37 plus 98 times 17. As you can see here, uh, I got a negative 37. That is not, in fact, an element of z98 but this is what this means is that this is negative 37 modulo 98 so the alpha inverse here is always the coefficient of whatever the alpha is in this linear combination which is equal to one of course and so that's gonna give me modulo 98 that gives me 61 so alpha inverse is uh, 61 all right so let's look at then what is alpha to the minus m? Alpha to the minus m is alpha to minus seven, which is the same as alpha inverse to the seven using the law of exponents. And what this all means is uh, 61, which is alpha inverse to the seven, that is all modulo 98. And if you actually compute that, you get, uh, of course, you get 90. Now, all these computations that I'm doing here, uh, you can do them uh, in a computer. It's usually easier that way, or calculator, because this is gonna, be too long to compute by hand. All right, so alpha to negative seven is 19. So that's one of the things I needed to do. The next thing I needed to do is step number four, which is beta times alpha to the minus m xg, where this xg runs from zero to m minus one. m here is seven, and so that will be up to six. Beta is that number that I'm trying to calculate the discrete log of. This alpha that is here is my generator and already compute this one here. So this XG is just this index that is running from zero to uh, six in this case. And we do this computation until we get uh, that this number appears in the second row of our table. That's exactly what we did in the previous uh, video. So what is all this beta times alpha to the negative M XG? Now beta is the number that I'm trying to uh, find the discrete log of in base 45, which is 61 in this case. Uh, alpha to the negative m in this case was 19. As you can see here, this is 19. So that's the number I have here, that's 19. X to the g modulo 98, because we're working in the group z 98 star, and this xg runs from zero to five. So I start doing these computations until this guy gives me an element of the second row and I make a, a note of what was the XG that produced that element. So I already did my computations here. So 61, I uh, started with XG equal uh, zero. So it's 61 times 90, 19 to the zero modulo 98. Of course that gives me 61. Uh, 61 times 19 to the first modulo 98. That gives me 81. You can uh, go ahead and double check that this is actually true. That's when XG is equal to one. I compute all of them, as you can see here, I have all the list, until I get 
to the fifth power when xg is equal to 5. I get 61 times 19 to the fifth, molecule 98. I get 29 and I realize that this is the first time all of these things that are here, the first one that appears in that table. So this is in the second row of the table. Let me show you the table here. These are the elements of the second row on my table that I already computed. If you double check here, these elements that are here, 61, 81, 69, 37, and 17, these elements do not appear in the second row of my table. So that means I don't have to do anything. I just do something when I that number appears there in my second. It appears here. So I make a note what this element is. So that will be my XB. That's uh, one of the things I need to compute. So my XB is 6 and my XG is 5. So let me write it down here. My XB is 6 and my XG is 5. Once you do this, you are pretty much done uh, computing the discrete log. Because the discrete log, which is denoted by X, also is XG times M plus XB. Now XG here is 5, so that's 5. M was 7 and XB is here, it was 6. You compute all of that and you get 41. What that really means is that the discrete log in base 45 of 61 is 41. And this is in the group Z98 star. And you can double check that that's actually true. So one way to double check it is take this number 45 to this power 41 modulo 98 and it has to give you this number here. And you can double check that this is actually true uh, using some computer program or you can do it in your calculator too which is going to give you a lot of uh, decimal uh, places here for the 41 uh, you can compute that as 61 so that's another example uh, here what we just did was the uh, baby step giant step algorithm to compute and discrete logs of course if the numbers are large this is not going to be feasible uh, this is all working because the numbers that i'm choosing are small so the tables are short if the numbers are large, the tables will be large and the way, the time it will take to compute the grid logs for very large numbers, it will be too much. It will be impractical to do it. But this uh, makes us a little bit better. Less computations than the ex brute force uh, approach. Now, all we did uh, for this, as you notice here, uh, we're talking about this kind of groups here for the discrete log. These are not the only groups for which you can talk about the discrete log. Now, in particular, all of these groups uh, needed to be cyclic. That's not the case in general. So you can have a generalized discrete log problem in which your group, uh, you can think about a group, remember, is a collection of elements with some operation. This operation is closed, meaning that taking two elements in here with this operation stays there. This operation is associative. It has an identity element and every element has an inverse. That's basically what a group is. We discussed this in uh, previous videos. Now the group doesn't have to be cyclic, so you don't have to have a generator. And you can take two elements, alpha and beta in G. Uh, alpha doesn't have to be a generator, but they have to be both of them in there. You can still ask the question of uh, find the discrete log and base alpha of beta if it exists, because if alpha is not a generator, this might not exist because some the powers of alpha as they don't have to be equal to beta here the powers of alpha do not cover the whole group g so let's see an example here um again with numbers so we have again this group z40 star this is not cyclic and the reason it's not cyclic is because when you factor the 40 is 2 cubed times 5 that's not uh, the form of the cyclic groups all the groups that are in this category, for them to be cyclic, this number has to be either 2, 4, uh, power of a odd prime, or twice the power of a odd prime, and that's not the case here. So this is definitely not cyclic. But we can still talk about the discrete log in this particular group. Now, so let's see an example here. So C40 is a uh, this collection of elements, which remember is all the numbers that are relatively prime to 40, between 1 and 40, and these are all of them. Uh, Z40 start doesn't have a gen any generators because, of course, it's not cyclic. If you had one, then it's already cyclic. 
but we can still ask the, the question of discrete logs. For example, uh, we can compute the discrete log uh, in base 13 of 37, and that gives me 3. And the reason for that is because 13 to uh, the cube power modulo 40 is equal to 37. Now, in this case, I cannot apply the giant step. Well, you can just apply it, but you won't get an answer uh, as easy as the ones with is when I cyclic. Uh, the reason I know this is because I already did this one first. So it's 13 to Q of modulo 40. I find out what that is. And so I'm realizing that the discrete log in base 13 of 37 is 3. If you apply the baby step giant step algorithm for the second one, you won't get an answer there because it, does, it doesn't exist. That discrete log doesn't exist. There is no power of 13 that gives me 19 in Z40 star that doesn't exist. So there's, so there's no solution to that problem. And that is the generalized discrete log. So the generalized discrete log doesn't have to be in cyclic groups. They might not exist, but you can still talk about them. Um, that's all, that thing that we just, I uh, just mentioned here, the generalized thing, is not what we uh, use in cryptography, at least for the Diffie-Hillman key exchange. We do that in, in groups of cyclic uh, type and more specifically the ones that have uh, come from prime numbers. So but just to mention, just to give you the idea that this doesn't have to be all in cyclic groups. All right, so that's basically all I have to say about the discrete log problem. I hope all of this was clear. This is also a preparation of, for the key Diffie-Hillman key exchange that we're going to talk about in the next videos. So all these concepts that we learn here, we'll use them later uh, for that Diffie-Hillman key exchange. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.